Hello. <laughs> Can you guys hear and see me now? I'm having some major OBS problems here, which is the software I'm using to stream. Also, the Atomos cast has let me down today. <laughs> Piotr, can you see me? Matt, can you see me? Someone let me know. Uh, unbelievable. Surely it's working this time. Oh, you can see me now. Oh, nice. Fantastic. Brilliant. We're finally up and running. I'm just going to check all of the different um, inputs, make sure they're all working so you guys can see what I'm looking at and, and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so that's me. Hello. Um, this is the desktop, so I can show you guys some of the stuff on the website, some of the, the catchphrases and stuff. And then we've got the uh, extra camera here for the close-up stuff. So you guys can see this. This is still sealed in the plastic. I'm quite excited about this one because um, it's a Poco F4. It, it's kind of, the Poco phone used to be the flagship killer. Now it's kind of transitioned into being the gaming flagship killer from what I've seen. And I haven't seen actually one of these in person yet. So I'm excited to see what's in the box, how it's all set up and all that kind of stuff. The specs for the money is of course, as good as ever, maybe better than ever, because we've got the, what I'm here, what I hear is, the most affordable Snapdragon Gen 1 on any Android device right now. And also I heard that this has a haptic motor, which is bigger than any haptic motor on an Android device right now. I think that might be contested, but uh, that's what I heard. Anyway, uh, before we get into the unboxing side of things, um, I just want to remind you guys, there is a competition running right now. Um, and the competition is for channel members only. So if you do sign up for the channel membership, you're automatically entered into the competition. I believe right now there's only five channel members, which means the odds of winning are fantastic. But if you do sign up, you'll get these very sort of uh, cool uh, loyalty badges next to your name. So I'm working on these. I'm gonna get some real ones made up, like proper, proper ones from an artist. But right now, if you sign up for $1 a month or 99 pence or whatever it is, you will get these. You'll get Luke Skywalker uh, in the first month, and then it will be uh, Obi-Wan, then Qui-Gon, then you'll get Mace Windu, Yoda, and then you'll get the legendary badge, badge there. That logo, that symbol, apparently means powerful in Chinese. I wasn't sure what the last one should be. These are still in the, uh, in the works. I'm trying to uh, think of something unique that maybe no one else has. And you'll also get access to some stickers that nobody else has as well. So you get the Iron Man, the Hawkeye, the Thor, and you get the One Up Mushroom. Again, those will be upgraded as time goes on. I can't add more of those until I get 10 channel members. Anyway, I'm going to stop boring you to death with the channel member stuff. I will say this. If you enter, if you, if you join the membership today, you will be in the competition to win the Tick Watch. So you guys can see. This is what you'll win. Uh, if you join the membership, you'll be you'll have very good odds of winning. Let's just say that because it's very new. I only just started it about a week ago. Uh, but yeah, this is a proper Wear OS <clears throat> watch. Loads of cool stuff on here. Check this out. Uh, Snapdragon 4100 platform, 62 hours battery. You've got a dual display. So there's an OLED and there's an LED display. Uh, one on top of the other. So when the full uh, smartwatch display runs out, it will actually uh, switch to the LED display so we can keep going and acting as a watch, which is what you want a watch to do, really. Uh, yeah, so anyway, very good prize, very good prize. I don't want to bore you to death. Any questions before we start? Uh, let me have a look at the... There's a little bit of a delay. I have to figure out how to reduce that delay uh, because I'll probably ask you a question and then uh, I won't see... I won't see it until uh, your answer to it or your questions until a little while later. What's going on, Kevin? Good to see you here. Luca. What's happening? Mike Ellis, Cloud Art. So the, the guys you see with the green uh, text, those are the channel members. You've got the Luke Skywalker at the moment. <laughs> all right. Let's get this unboxed. Let's see what this is all about. I'm excited for this one. 
And the uh, shout out to uh, Matt Purposely Gaming. He's the moderator, the official moderator for What Gear Reviews live streams right now. Uh, he has a gaming channel and he streams like Call of Duty and stuff like that. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff, look him up on Twitch. All right, let's, let's see what we got. So the easy access to the Google apps you use the most. So that's a little dig at Huawei probably. Uh, 5G as well. Um, I think Huawei is suffering because they can't do 5G for whatever reason, but uh, that's there on the box as well. Uh, this one, just so we know before we get into it, uh, this one is the uh, 12 gigabyte RAM, 256 gigabyte storage, stealth black. There is a better explanation for the black on the back. We'll come back to that later on in the video. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Okay. So just like we've come to expect from Xiaomi and Poco, silicon case in the box, load of paperwork. And check this out, we do have uh, the USB-C to 3.5 millimeter. These have got a bit better now, I'm told. In the early versions of these, the sound wasn't all that. I think it's a lot better now. <clears throat> right, here's the phone itself. Switch up the camera so you can see a different angle. So, um, flagship 4 nanometer Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, that's the most powerful this year, except for the uh, Plus variant now. So there is a sort of overclock version of the uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Uh, 120 hertz flat AMOLED. Interesting they add the word flat in there. Um, that is quite a big selling point to a lot of people. I hear a lot of YouTubers preferring the flat screens as opposed to the curved ones. So maybe that's why they've added that word in there. 480 hertz touch sampling. So this is where they're going after the gaming market because that's very, very, very good. That's very good. Um, magnetic pop-up triggers, quad speakers with Dolby Atmos, and then smart 120 watt hypercharge, 4,700 milliamp hour battery. Those are all good things, all of them. Anyway, let's see what else is in the box here. So that is a 120 watt European charger. Um, it's got some weight to it. Check, well, you, I was gonna say check that out, but you, you wouldn't know, would you? <laughs> uh, orange accent on the bit in the middle there. And then we've got the cable in the box. And this is a unique cable. Let me switch up the angle again here. Okay, check this out. Um, this is a unique cable it has a right angle on it. So basically you can charge and play at the same time without it getting in the way uh, when you're playing. I don't know if this has the um, that feature where it can run off the power and not use the actual battery power. I'm not sure if that has that. I'll have to check within the uh, phone setting, see if they've got that. It's kind of like a pass-through setting. I think Sony phones use it. Um, it'd be cool if they had that. Anyway. Yeah, let me know in the comments, guys. Who prefers the curved screen? How many people prefer a curved screen and how many people prefer the flat screen? Because as far as I'm concerned, the curved screen, I think, makes the phone a little bit more comfortable to hold. The flat screen, I think, just generally lets you make the most of the full display because usually with the curved edges, you get a bit of a, sometimes you get a bit of a, a color shift at the edges of the screen. Um, and maybe it makes it more prone to breaking as well. Let me know what you think of the flat versus curved screens. Samsung seem to believe in curve because they've been they've been doing those on their flagships for ages now. Okay, this is nice. My first impressions here is this phone actually feels quite wide. The weight is good. The design on the back is uh, quite unique. There is a yellow and black version of this that kind of reminds me of a, 
Bruce Lee's uh, a Bruce Lee style phone. Um, Poco uh, 5G on the back. This is a quite a bit subtle, more subtle than some of the other Poco phones I've seen in the past, the ones that have the massive branding on the back. Uh, there's a small learning curve to curve screens. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Most people prefer flat in the comments here. Um, so there's a little thunderbolt up here by the camera. I'm not sure why that is there. Well, actually, I think that might actually be an LED. Wow, okay. That's pretty cool. Um, let's get this thing booted up. I did make some bullet points about this phone. Even though I've never seen it before, I did my research. So I'll run through some of the stuff while this is booting up. Um, so the front and back of this device is Gorilla Glass Victus. So for those of you, most of you probably already know, that's the strongest Gorilla Glass that we have at the moment. Um, it does add that premium feel to it. The frame, I believe, is a metal frame on here. This is running on MIUI 13 on the Android 12 platform. Um, I have to set this up and it's gonna take a little while. But let me go through some of the other stuff. Hopefully you can see. I'm gonna to move to the other camera quickly. Hopefully you can see this better here. So there's a few things unique about this phone. Um, can you see that there? So that is the speaker grill, except it's not just a single single speaker. It's actually a, a speaker and a woofer there on that top edge. Then on this side, we have the same thing. So we have technically four speakers on this device. And we also have three microphones. So they've really got gamers in mind here because when you hold the phone, you're gonna hold it like this. They put them on this edge so you're not gonna block them when you're playing. The microphones are also here, here, and down here as well. So there's actually three mics. So even if you manage to block the two left and right mics, the third one should still be able to pick you up. So for game chat and stuff like that, that's really impressive. You could tell that they've really thought about gamers when they thought about the positioning of these elements. And I haven't gone in screen fingerprint reader, which I don't mind uh, as long as the uh, fingerprint reader they use is um, reliable. And we'll have to find out how reliable that is. But this is the big deal here. Check this out. Hopefully you guys can see this. Hope the lights are right. These switches sh should release the triggers. So these kind of just pop up just a bit. So those are actual gaming triggers specific for gaming. You can apparently map these to other functions as well within the software. I'm not sure what the limitations are on that, but you can see once the red dots are showing here, they're released. And when we close them like that, that locks them back into place. And actually they're completely flush to the side of the phone and that is really really awesome because maybe you don't want to use your phone for gaming all the time maybe you just want to use it as a normal phone um, in those cases you just kind of lock those down and that's it it's basically like a normal phone again and from the front you wouldn't even know that the uh, buttons are there that's quite unique we do have the two-in-one power and fingerprint there and volume rocker on the left side and this also has an IR blaster. Now, IR blasters, are, let me know in the comments, guys, how useful are uh, IR blasters to you? I mean, for me, I lose the remote controls all the time, um, so they are useful, um, but I change phones so frequently that it's hard to sort of uh, program the remote before I lose the remote, before, until you experience it, you don't really program this as a backup. <laughs> uh, side mount fingerprint reader I mean they're good I've had some phones where they're a bit like unreliable um, what I'm going to do now actually and let you guys get some questions in so uh, Matt keep an eye out for the good questions any questions you guys have about this phone let me know and I'll try and answer them for you because uh, I'm going to try and get logged in here now on my Google account and what I'm going to do is uh, we'll run through some of the uh, the stuff that Poco themselves talk about on their website. Um, so you could tell, you know, they just released um, Apex uh, Legends on the phone. And I kind of get the feeling that Poco uh, are trying to ride that wave when it comes to some of the wording they've used on the website. Um, so they've 
they've basically uh, highlighting the, the three things that they consider to be the most important at the top. So it's the flagship chip, which is a big deal. I mean, this is the most affordable one, most affordable phone with this at the moment. The hypercharge is insane, we'll come back to that, and the flat AMOLED. And they highlight the word flat. Uh, 120 hertz as well, so that's a big deal when it comes to how fast the screen can refresh, how smooth it appears to be when you're using it, and the fact that it's an AMOLED means that you get that crazy uh, contrast range. I think it's five million to one contrast ratio on this phone. Um, right, I'm just gonna get logged in, so I'm gonna go quiet for a minute. You guys get your questions in, and I'll try my best to answer those questions. But keep in mind, I've only just got this phone today. Well, I've only just looked at this phone today. I have done a bit of background on it. Uh, right. Oh, God. There you go, another look into the infinite. Somewhere back there is a dot that represents everything that's happening right now. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me come off this page. Uh, right. Let me check the comments out. Yeah, the bottom bezel is actually, uh, it's not even bad, you know, it's not even bad at all. Meant to be IP53, IPX rating, but not official. Yeah, with, with the IP ratings, they usually, they have to pay like a company or whatever to certify them for that. Most of the times they take all of the steps to make it meet that, but they just haven't got to the point where they've actually been given the certification. Um, Yeah, this phone is awesome, Matt. It, it really is, especially for someone like yourself who's into gaming and that. This is uh, this is built for you. Like I said, they've gone after the flagship killer uh, audience again, but it's the gaming flagship killer. <laughs> That's what this is, in my opinion. That seems to be what this phone is meant to be. Uh, but even when you put this but this um, side by side with the um, some of the other flagships right now. It really stands up to them based on the specs, and I don't know until I really use it. Uh, once I get logged in, uh, Michelle, I will tell you. Um, this is the longest bit. I wanted to actually take this out of the box before the live stream and get it all set up, but then I thought it's not very authentic, is it? It's not like I'm seeing it for the first time then, and I'm, I'm taking it out of the box like I'm pretending like I'm unboxing it, but I'm not actually unboxing it. Um, so I didn't do that. I wanted to download a bunch of games as well and actually test it out fully. But I thought to keep it authentic, let's just take it out of the box, box fresh, and give you guys my genuine first impressions um, as opposed to sort of a rehearsed um, live stream. Okay, um, right. Let's run through some more of the website stuff. So Apex Performance again, definitely going after that Apex Legends. Uh, market surely. Um, lucky for me, I actually got to go to the launch um, tech summit for the Snapdragon, and it, it just it blows my mind how every year the chip gets like not smaller, but the the process is smaller and smaller, and the device gets the chip gets more powerful, more powerful. Just thinking like, when is this going to end, and how how small can they really go with these? It's crazy to think what it might be like in 10 years because every year the power, the the performance, the graphics, the audio, the AI, everything improves significantly. It's like a big jump. It's not even a little jump. What is it going to be in 10 years from now? It's, it's mind blowing. Hold on, this one's to back up from another device. Let's not do that. Uh, Matt, do we have any questions? Any good good questions in the comments? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'll remind you guys, uh, TickWatch Pro up for grabs. Um, if you want to win this, is a very, very good Wear OS watch. Uh, this is actually the LTE version, so you can actually connect it to your network. You can win this if you join the channel membership. Uh, it's 99 
pence uh, a month or something like that and you get a bunch of stickers and stuff like that uh, which is cool there is since i last checked there was five channel members so the odds of winning uh, are really good and the only reason there's five channel members is because literally this is the second live stream where i've actually mentioned it i really should promote it a bit more but i'll be quite happy to give this watch to to one of the five people because uh yeah you guys have been following the channel for a long time and you deserve it so I hope one of you guys win. Uh, okay. Just trying to get logged in here. No Picasso this time. Netpok, how you doing? Uh, Netpok, uh, in the comments, he was the winner of the previous competition where I gave away the... Um, Bloody hell, I've forgotten what phone it is already. It was a real me C35. So we did a live giveaway and he was the winner. Just so you guys know, it's authentic. Uh, I shipped the phone out to Greece. Uh, hopefully you get it soon. Uh, so bear with me guys, I'm just uh, logging in here. Any of you guys watched OB1? Let me know. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Okay. Right, I'm nearly there, nearly logged in. We'll start running through some more of the, uh, the other specs. All right, check this out. Who asked about the uh, fingerprint scanner? We're about to find out firsthand how good it is. Um, okay. So this is a setup screen. We're gonna go fingerprint. Got to do a pin number. I actually do like this display. I've been using the um, the Vivo X80 Pro, which has the curved display for a while. And coming back to a flat display like this is, uh, yeah, you notice it straight away. The bezels, of course, look wider than what I'm used to on the X80. But let's see how many touches this takes to register the fingerprint. There we go, probably about, I don't know, 20 or so. Right, we're registered. And this, yes to all of this stuff. Continue. I'm just going to read the comments quickly. HN2 is 4 nanometer. They haven't announced the Gen 2 though. They normally announce it December. Unless there's been leaks. All right. Pull two nanometers the limit and we're at six or seven. I thought it was four nanometer this one. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. <laughs> All right, while this is loading up and doing whatever it's doing, let's go through some of the other stuff that uh, Poco themselves talk about. So this is an example of where they've improved the uh, Snapdragon. So up 20% on the CPU, 50% on the graphics, uh, more efficient. That means it uses less power whilst doing so. And then the AI is up 400%. So uh, maybe in 10 years, we'll have Terminators walking around. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, as I said before, this is a kind of a gaming flagship killer phone and they've gone with a liquid cool technology inside the phone. So uh, this normally consists of like layers of things, uh, graph uh, graphene being one of the most commonly used ones. But uh, the idea is it keeps the device cooler uh, when you're playing games because the CPU and everything and the GPU is under a lot of pressure uh, and it heats up. And when it heats up, the performance of the chip can come down in order to protect it. So if you have a cooling chamber, essentially you could push the device a bit further without it 
catching on fire. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, not only is the... Um, hold on a sec. You're not looking at the screen, are you? <laughs> there we go. This is what I wanted to show you. And, of course, uh, the, the GPU, CPU, all this kind of stuff on the Snapdragon chip is not the only uh, thing when it comes to gaming. The actual ROM and the RAM that you're using is a big factor as well. So we've got UFS 3.1, which is very, very fast compared to the previous gen. Uh, and then the RAM as well is LPDDR5, faster than the previous gen as well. So read-write sp uh, speed when it comes to loading games uh, is much better, much improved on these devices. And that's the same stuff that they're using in the proper flagships right now as well. Uh, so that's impressive. Um, this so these again are more gaming centric features um so essentially what this is, is if you have a 5g connection and a wi-fi connection the phone will decide which one of those is better to use at any particular time so that you get a better experience when you're playing online um so that's pretty cool that that's in there and there's another one here uh, the antenna so on a let's say a regular phone like a samsung or something like that this really just for everybody. Uh, the antenna will be wherever they feel is best placed. But in this phone, they've actually designed it to be on the top and bottom so that the your hands aren't blocking or reducing the signal at all. Uh, again, making sure you're getting the fastest speeds from your Wi-Fi or your 5G or whatever it is you're using. So it's cool. That's, again, a good example of how they've really focused on the gamers. Um, and, then, and then, of course, power one of the most important things when it comes to actually you could you could argue uh, that power power could be the most important part of a device because without it you can't do anything so um yeah this is a big deal um with this phone we have the 4700 milliamp hour battery but that's split into two cells essentially and by splitting it into two cells We've got the 120 watt hypercharger, but essentially each cell is being charged with a 60 watt charge. So it's like two 60 watt charges filling two batteries at the same time. And, and that's why the speed is so insane. I'm not sure if I can remember a phone that, that even says that it can charge this quick. 17 minutes uh, to 100%. If that's true, that is truly, truly insane. Um, and again, the charger is in the box. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, nowadays, we have to buy chargers more um, because they're not in the box. So it's really great to see that Poco uh, are still doing that. So it says 17 minutes charge to 100%, but then it says uh, charge while you play your games and the battery will reach 100% in 27 minutes. No, sorry, 27 minutes. So basically, you can play and charge to 100% in 27 minutes whilst playing a game. That's pretty crazy. Uh, I'm gonna read the comments quickly. You see a lot of phones actually using this dual cell stuff now. Uh, yeah, that's the power pass through would be amazing because Sony do that. And I think it's a good thing to protect the battery on the device to have that feature. I think Sony call it HS pass through and it also allows the phone to stay a bit cooler as well. So I'm surprised that um, Poco haven't done that. Or maybe they can do it with software. I don't think it's a hardware thing. Yeah, the charging is ridiculous. Oh, was I getting trolled a little bit there? <laughs> That's the first time. This is the world's first. The world's first time I've been trolled on the live stream. All right, cool. Uh, let's crack on. We're nearly logged in on this phone now, so I can give you guys some uh, demos of the, the speakers and stuff. Um, right. The dog has decided to um, crawl under the table now. Um, okay, 
Let me show you guys the fingerprint sensor. Some of you guys ask about this. So the speed, it's not bad. Yeah. I'm used to the um, Sonic, uh, the, the massive Sonic fingerprint reader in the Vivo phone. So this feels a little bit slower than that, but it's not bad. All right, cool. Um, in terms of sound, let's check out sound, see how it, how it sounds. Um, I do have a Samsung here, so I can actually play the Samsung to you guys and this one side by side, and then you can hear the different difference between the two. Uh, okay, let's do that. Oh, <laughs> did you guys see the uh, intro for this video, which I did Yes, actually released today, this phone released today. I'll play the intro on this and then I'll play the same intro on the Samsung and you guys can hear the difference. What the? I haven't figured out how to put music in the background. So when there's like awkward silences, I, I understand it's extra awkward. <laughs> when I figure out how to do uh, background music, I will. Uh, okay, cool. I'll tell you what, let's do it this way around. We'll do... Um, what we'll do, we'll do uh, the Samsung first and then we'll do the Poco and then you guys can tell me what the difference is in the sound quality. Uh, keeping in mind that this phone has four speakers and this one only has two. Um, we would expect the Poco to be better. Let's see. Electronics and outer space. And it showcases right. When I look at the back of this phone, do you know what I see? That's maximum I sound. See a retro futuristic design that takes inspiration from the machine age factories electronics and outer space and it showcases the extreme contrast with outer space all right let's go with uh let's go with the second one now the explanation for the back of that phone was the best so far the best one but you know what the sound sounds really good on this. When I look at the back of this phone, do you know what I see? I see a retro Same distance. futuristic design that takes inspiration from the machine age, factories, electronics, and outer space. And it showcases the extreme contrast between... Let me know what you thought of that, but for my opinion, it does sound better than the Samsung. I didn't expect that. Um, well, actually, I should do, but based on the specs, it, it should be, really, shouldn't it? Four speakers. Um, what is going on with the desktop? Okay, cool. Uh, settings for battery life. Okay, we'll have a look at that, actually. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the battery life settings. Uh -oh. How's that looking? Is the uh, the colours and the brightness have been all right there? Yeah. All right. Cool. So um, there is an update which is annoying. Um, be nice to have those. Actually, it's just some minor ones. Um, let's go to battery and have a look. So within the battery settings, uh, we have the ultimate battery saver. Um, scroll down, shows you the screen on and all that kind of stuff. If we go to settings up here, so you can switch to performance mode, um, which I think is just going to ramp up all, all of the uh, screen refresh rate and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, up here we have more settings so turn off mobile data when the device is locked clear the cache uh, when the device is locked that's pretty handy actually so every time you close the phone down it clears the cache 
that could be useful. Um, 5G battery saver. Uh, so yeah, in certain scenarios, it will save battery on the 5G. What's going on, Picasso? Sorry about the first one. I, uh, it was a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> Everything went wrong. Um, so within the battery saver options, there's more options. Um, yeah. And then within the ultra, ultra battery saver, there's even more options. Um, so yeah, you could probably get a lot out of this. I have seen reviews where they said the battery life isn't as good as some of the other flagships right now, but the charging speed is what makes up for it. The fact that you can get to 100% in less than 20 minutes is insane. Oh yeah, I did do a, a video about saving battery, but that was that was for a Samsung phone. Some of those things will be on other uh, Android phones as well. Um, but yeah, so battery drain notifications you've got on here and then you've got app battery saver as well. So you can actually choose apps uh, to save battery on. I wonder how that works actually. So let's say Genshin Impact, um, you can restrict background apps, restrict background activity when you're playing and that way it will actually uh, limit the battery usage on those when you're playing those games so that's pretty cool you can do that that is really cool i didn't see any uh pass through on the power supply though which would have been nice to see and then look we've got a battery issue already i don't know how that's possible um it's saying something's draining the battery what is that i'm not sure what that is but there's a bunch of other stuff you can do here. Look, turn on dark mode, lower refresh rate, clear memory every 10 minutes, turn off location, turn off haptics, uh, don't wait to screen for notifications. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. And by doing this, it actually tells you it, was, it will add one extra minute to your, uh, to your battery life. Fantastic. Um, right, let me run through some of the other uh, bullet points I made about this phone. And I think, I mean, I've got to really test it before I can give you guys a proper opinion on it. But so far, for the price that this comes in at and the features that it has, it's really, really awesome. Um, but I don't want to forget anything important. There is some other cool stuff and that I found out about this. Um, so there is apparently an LED around the camera module. I have no idea how you get that to work. Um, let's see if we activate the camera, if that would do it. Uh, Maybe it only comes on when you're playing games. Um, what I wanted to show you as well is interesting choice of words here uh, on the camera module. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but it actually says freezing, which is not really what you want when you're playing games, but I get why, what they mean. And then uh, speediest, which is, uh, again, an interesting uh, word. I mean, speediest device, fantastic. They should have just put fast or something, I don't know. <laughs> but freezing, probably uh, not the best word. Maybe like ice cool or something like that would have been better. Um, I really want to get that LED to work. Uh, within the camera, all right, let's talk camera actually, um, before I uh, bore you guys to death. <laughs> Yeah, Genshin's preloaded. Actually, that's a good point. Let's have a look at what's preloaded here. Um, not a whole lot of stuff. I mean, I've seen worse on other phones. Um, so there's some services here, which I'm not sure why they're there. Poco Store, Poco Community. I believe this is uh, Poco's own notes app. The Me Video Music, that's going to be preloaded. Genshin's preloaded. And that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, apart from that, there's nothing else. It didn't, and the remote as well, which is handy because there is an IR blaster. Um, so that's handy. Well, let's see what Poco say. If they let me keep the phone, I might do a giveaway on it. Um, again, this this one though, because it's such a good phone, I think it's got to be exclusive. <laughs> so it's a good idea. Listen, guys, I'm not just for the um, the tick watch giveaway. But for future giveaways as well, um, I want to prioritize the channel members. I will do giveaways to the wider community and stuff. Um, 
but it's the channel members who will get the better ones. Uh, yeah, so keep that in mind. So if you do join, it's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. Um, okay, cool. Let's talk about cameras. Um, let me get the the little camera rolling again. There we go. Is it back on? All right, yeah. Uh, what can I take a picture of now? Give me a minute. Let me get uh, something to take pictures of. Oh, no. It's run out of battery. Give me a second. Right. See, I came prepared this time with uh, extra power supplies because in the first live stream, uh, pretty much all of my cameras died and I didn't have any power supply anywhere. Uh, give me a second. Right. Anyone know what this character's from? Yeah, the battery on the ZV-1, it's not a great battery on that, I must say. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk cameras then. So, um, the primary camera on this phone is a 64 megapixel um, primary. So it's similar to the IQ I did the video on today in terms of setup. Um, it's a decent sensor, but remember this phone isn't designed to be like the world beating camera phone. It's meant to be the, uh, the world beating uh, gaming phone. But the 64 megapixel primary is good. Then we've got an eight megapixel ultra wide, which seems pretty decent actually, in terms of sometimes you see a bit of a color shift between the, the primary and the ultra wide. Doesn't seem to be much one here. We do have a telly here as well, but that's just an op, uh, not an optical, just a regular sort of digital zoom. Um, so you won't see a color shift on that because it's just zooming in digitally. Uh, but there is a macro, so there's a two megapixel macro mode as well. Um, so we go into that. So with the macro camera, we should be able to get really, really close to the subject. And actually it's doing a good job without losing too much detail there. I'm quite impressed with that macro actually, it looks pretty good. Um, yes, let me show you the pictures, hopefully you can see this all right. Um, so that's the macro. To be honest, I should have chose a better character because this is all black, it's not really a good example, is it? Um, that's your ultra wide. Do it this way, you can see it bigger. Pretty good detail. And then we've got the uh, the primary there. And in fact, the ultra wide for some reason looks better than the primary. It's probably to do with the lighting in here. The, the light actually um, is bouncing off the wall over there. And the one behind me is actually very dim. So there's not actually that much light on the subject. But I'm not, uh, I'm, not blown away by it, but it is good. I have to test it in good lighting and I'm sure it'll be much better. A lot of phones, um, especially uh, in the mid tier, do fantastic in daylight. Literally they can give flagships a run for the money, but then you start to notice the difference between the flagships uh, in the lower light settings. For example, this versus the Xiaomi 12. The Xiaomi 12 uh, will be significantly better and that is one of the top flagships right now. Um, yeah, some other features in here, of course, all of the, uh, the usual camera features you expect to see. You can do the 64 megapixel mode, which gives you the full 64 megapixels without the pixel binning. Uh, typically they look better with pixel binning though, but you do have the option to do that. So you can do maybe better editing and stuff like this on the uh, Lightroom. You can do long exposure, dual video, time-lapse, there's movie effects here. See what those are. Oh, you have to download these, so they're like add-ons for the camera app. Uh, short video, that's gonna be for like TikTok and stuff like that. Um, the selfie camera on this is a 20 megapixel. 
uh, it looks pretty good. I am uh, looking real sweaty in this picture because um, it is like an oven in here right now with all this electronics. Uh, any questions, guys? Yeah, so Vivo um, and Realme sort of compete in this same sort of space. Um, one thing I'll say about this particular phone is it has some stuff that, well, they've built it. You can tell they've built it for gamers, whereas other phones are built as a phone and then they add in the gaming features after. It does feel like this phone was built for gamers. And I say that knowing full well, actually, this was... Um, the original version of this phone was actually the Redmi uh, K50 gaming phone. I think they kind of rehashed the design a little bit uh, um, for the uh, global market. Um, yeah. <laughs> the Vivo, the yeah, the Vivo uh, X80 Pro is, is my is my main phone at the moment. Okay, cool. Um, right, we'll talk about the screen. I think we'll start wrapping this up and I'll give you guys a little, one more reminder to enter the competition. Um, so when it comes to the display, let's load up a video and see what it can do actually. You guys ever see that film Willow? <laughs> it was around about the same time as uh, Indiana Jones and all that kind of stuff. There's a new Willow series coming to Netflix. I'm gonna show you guys the trailer. <laughs> It looks so good. There is I'm gonna mute it though. I saw it the other day. It's like, wow, I can't believe they're they're doing a series of this. Uh, let's see what this phone can do. Then let's switch to the top down. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I'll talk you guys through the display that we have here on this phone. So it's a Samsung Super AMOLED. Um, so I already probably told you that it's a 6.67 inch OLED 120 Hertz 10 bit colors um, so that's a pretty big deal billion colors on the screen um, 480 Hertz touch sampling which means when you're gaming and stuff like that the um, the input response time is going to be amazing and also because you've got the triggers at the top the response time on those should be really good like mouse click quick when it comes to gaming that's a pretty big deal uh, in terms of peak brightness, the peak brightness, I'm told, is 780 nits, which isn't the brightest screen ever. Uh, but for gaming and stuff like this, as long as you're not sitting on a beach or something, uh, you should be good to go with this screen. They've also got the two Rhineland rating as well, certificate. So that means they've tested it for blue light. I guess that applies to the... Um, um, to the actual eye comfort mode that it will have um, so you're not blinding yourself because blue light uh, can damage your eyes but also it can affect your sleep as well some of you guys might know that uh, too much blue light can affect your circadian rhythm they call it um, anyway let me show you guys last few specs here on the screen uh, 395 pixels per inch we've got DCI P3 color gamut uh, MEMC, so MEMC adds in frames in between a lower refresh rate display to make it appear to be smoother. Um, 5 million to 1 contrast ratio, true colors, uh, and 6.67. And it's Dolby Vision rated as well, HDR10 plus rated. Display may give it an A plus, so that's a pretty big deal. I always question these things though. When I see like Display Mate A plus, that's like them saying, it can't get any better. And that isn't true because technology always gets better. Next year, Poco, the Poco 5, F5, will have a better display. So what are they gonna do at A++ and then the year after A++++? I think they've gotta really be a bit more realistic with it so we actually know uh, there is room for improvement. Anyway, I don't know what you guys thought so on that are. That's just my opinion. Um, yeah, pro grade display. Uh, one hit, one step ahead of your opponent with the faster refresh rates. Um, yeah, so they say this one is 
10, oh yeah, this is important. So the input response on the screen, the areas in which you can input uh, is broken down into little squares. And what they've done with this phone is 10 x the uh, amount of areas that you can touch and, and, and that's allowed it to be more responsive. So you can see on the left, um, the bigger squares, that's like a traditional phone and they've 10 x that. So with the super resolution touch, you could be way more precise. Not that anybody's fingers would ever be that small, uh, but it is there. And I guess that's an improvement. But also, I guess that kind of in, in, increases the uh, chance to uh, hit the wrong part of the screen, maybe. I don't know. Uh, 190, 1920 hertz, PWM dimming. Oh yeah, so this is to do with screen flicker. So they've reduced that. Apex audio as well. Um, yeah, so the sound, I have to say, is, is a standout feature here. The buttons are a standout feature. Um, but they've also got this certified for high-res audio, which means uh, over wireless as well, which means you get the higher bit rate over wireless. And the Dolby Atmos, I always question Dolby Atmos on phones because Atmos to me is the front sound, the the sound behind and the sound above. I don't see how you can get that from a phone, but it's Atmos rated, uh, which is good. So it's better than a phone that doesn't have that, I guess. Uh, the three mics told you guys about that as well. That's a genius uh, idea for gaming. Uh, and then the styles. Okay, yeah, this is, this is what I've been looking forward to. Uh, <laughs> the back of the device, the, the wording, uh, the wording explanation for the back of phones is one of my favorite things. Um, so I'm probably going to start most of my reviews on devices with how they explain the back of their phones. So check this one out uh, and take a look at it. So the back of this phone is a metallic style design with refined and subtle details. The AG glass material provides a delicate hand feel and the futuristic design elements unleash a surge of power and give the phone a powerful boost. The unique camera deco is exquisite and refreshing. It looks like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it is cool. But let me show you guys the, uh, the one that I wish they sent me. This one here, the yellow and black one, the Bruce Lee one. How cool is that? Cyber yellow. Oh yeah, this is what I wanted to show you, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. And maybe I have to boot up a game to get it to work. Uh, but there is RGB around the camera module that lights up. I'm not sure what the different colors mean, uh, but the fact that it's got that is pretty cool. So when you're playing games and stuff, people are watching you playing games and stuff, they know you're playing games because the RGB is on. So that's pretty cool. It's a nice touch. Uh, lightning flash so yeah the little so it is a flash that is the flash so i don't know if you guys can see it probably have to switch to the can you see that i i wasn't sure but yeah that's the flash that's the flash module there the lightning bolt that's pretty cool um right we're getting there guys gonna wrap this up in a minute so the triggers standout feature absolutely that's amazing this is actually the first phone that I've ever reviewed or tested that has that feature the with actual triggers on it. I always wonder why Sony didn't turn their camera shutter button into a, a, a trigger for gaming as well. I mean, the button's there. Um, magnetic pop-up triggers. Oh, look, and you can, you can remap these so you can shortcut them to various things within the settings menu. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and I like the fact when you're not using them, they basically go flush the device. Fantastic. Um, this is the um, haptics as well. So for gaming and stuff like that, this is important. Um, they've upgraded the haptic motor. I'm guessing this is vers versus a previous version or just a generic one. Um, but it's a 5.12 GPP. And I did research on what GPP stands for. Um, and now I can't remember what it is. <laughs> it's some really weird 
word that no one has probably ever used ever, uh, but it is uh, relative to uh, vibration motors. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, gaming turbo mode. I believe we have this in other uh, Xiaomi phones as well. Um, yeah. Uh, and then the L-shaped cable, which is brilliant. It's a brilliant design choice. When you're playing, you can just plug that in and it doesn't really get in the way too much. Um, it, it's, it's just right, actually. So like it kind of goes like that. So when you're playing, you can, you can still reach your triggers. You still got clearance for the um, for the speakers either side as well, um, so it's really cool. That is a good choice, and it's a long cable as well. It's longer than your regular uh, charging cable, from what I can see. Um, cool. Okay, uh, cameras. We already looked at these. Um, I have to test them out in proper daylight, though. To be fair, I don't want to. This is this is a uh, bad lighting conditions for any phone. Uh, so it's not a really good test what I did today in this video, especially because the character's all grey as well. That doesn't help. Um, yeah, so it's examples of the phone. Um, yeah, so even more power. Who doesn't want more power? We've got NFC in there, which is good. So that means we can do um, mobile payments. We've got the upgraded IR blaster. I don't know if that means it's more powerful. It has more range. Maybe it does. You've got the MIUI 13 side, uh, side fingerprint sensor. Gorilla Glass Victus, fantastic. And that is it when it comes to the uh, website. My first impressions uh, on this phone. Uh, sorry, I'm looking really sweaty now. <laughs> um, first impressions on this phone is, it is unique. I've not tested anything like this before. Um, it looks awesome. The explanation for how it looks, the back of it at least, is awesome. The display is top notch. The chip is top notch. The sound is one of the best sounding phones that I've heard right now. I have to test it against the iPhone to see if it sounds better than the iPhone. The triggers are a really nice touch, uh, especially for shooting games uh, where you have triggers. The response time, uh, the input response as well. I mean, it really ticks all of the boxes. There's not too much of a, a chin or a forehead. It's kind of even all the way around on the display. Um, I have to check how many years software updates you're going to get on it as well, uh, but I'd expect it to be pretty good. Um, I do like this phone. It's a good phone. My first impressions are it feels nice, it looks nice, the features are there, the power is there. Yeah, it ticks all the boxes. Um, I'm going to come back to the uh, to the comments, and then I think we'll wrap this up. Uh, Matt, any questions? Uh, any any particular questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah fingerprints everywhere oh no yeah that's one thing actually that is one thing there are fingerprints everywhere I bet on the yellow version it wouldn't be as bad as this uh, it's hard to get around fingerprints but I must say the IQ that I did the review on today um, it's not a glass back it's a, it's a polycarbonate but it somehow doesn't get any fingerprints on it They should put a cleaning cloth in the box with these phones if they're fingerprint magnets. Yeah, the cable is sturdy, very sturdy. Uh, where did I put it now? I don't know what I've done with it now. <laughs> it's here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Let's check the sturdiness, shall we? Uh, USB C is typically very, are very sturdy. That is, that's solid. That's going nowhere. Like even, even to take it out of the device is, is quite firm. Yeah. It really clicks in and clicks out. Um, very tactile, very tactile. Oh look. It just uh, it prompted me to configure the pop-ups to do whatever. Oh, let me take this out. Um, so we can double press the left one and we can do various things. So check this out. I uh, hope you guys can see this. Um, you can open camera, record video, record screen, record audio, torch, silent mode and vibrate. And then I'm assuming the other side, same thing. 
You can customize these when you're not gaming to do various things. So that means you don't have to lock them away always. If you want to, you can just leave them out and use them as these shortcuts, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's a nice feature. It's a nice option to have. You don't get that on other phones, other flagships. Um, that is definitely a good feature. What I want to do, just very quickly before we wrap this up, uh, Wi-Fi 6, of course, yeah. So the, the HM1 uh, is Wi-Fi 6. As long as they put the antennas in the device, which they have. Uh, in terms of latency, like gaming lag, you mean, it will depend on the connection, um, on what kind of connection you've got. I'll tell you one thing, though. My my internet in, in this room is terrible right now. I don't know what's going on. Uh, yeah, it is one of the best features, the triggers, definitely. I think the sound, the triggers, and the display, and the RGB, are some of the best features on this phone. Let me load up Genshin and see if the lights come on. Oh no, it needs an update. Um, yeah. Great. Now I want my credit card details. Skip that. So, um, yeah, that's the phone. I do like it. It's a great phone. It is a flagship killer, but more specifically, I would say it's a gaming flagship killer. Um, that seems to be what it is. I think if they put this phone out without the triggers, without the RGB, without the speakers, and it was maybe £100 cheaper, it would definitely be in the conversation for flagship killer. And it is in that conversation I had a look on Amazon uh, before this video and uh, I think it's retailing for about 600 quid. And that's without all the discounts and stuff you can find if you shop around. Uh, so that kind of puts it in the upper mid tier. If it was below the 500 quid mark, closer to 400 pounds, then it would definitely be in a conversation for a flagship killer. Absolutely. Um, let's see if the RGB comes on. Oh, hold on. We have to go into the performance mode. Oh, nice. So when you boot up a game, um, you get kind of prompt to uh, set up the shoulder buttons. I'm wondering if you could just map them to any point on the screen or how that works. Uh, it's pretty cool, though. What I want to know is where's the RGB? Uh brightness let's go performance here we go this got to be it isn't it performance mode oh no RGB yet oh, I'm going to have to figure that out <laughs> I do not have time to register okay cool uh, I appreciate you guys for sticking around this long. I don't know how long I've been going for now. I did want to keep this one around 45 minutes. And the funny thing is, when I set this up for 7 p.m., I set a bunch of Alexa reminders saying, Troy, get to the point, wrap it up now, all this kind of stuff. And those were going off while I was trying to figure out what the hell was going wrong um, with the camera setup and everything. And uh, have, you ever seen, have you ever seen the original Mary Poppins where the dude's walking down the street with all the instruments and the drums and, the, and he's walking, he's like a one-man band. That's like me with this camera equipment because I am the tech support. When something goes wrong, I have to figure it out. There's no one here to help me. <laughs> it's a bloody nightmare. Uh, yeah, I want to get that RGB working. I really want to get that working. Maybe I'll post a little video on the socials. <laughs> Well, I think we're going to wrap this up. Um, just a, one last reminder about the um, about the tick watch. So uh, to win this watch, you have to be a channel member. I haven't checked, but the last time I did check, there was only five channel members, which means the odds are very, very good on winning. If you join the channel membership, you get a bunch of uh, custom stickers and you get badges next to your name, like the Luke Skywalker. Uh, and then it gradually evolves into Master Yoda 
and then you get the legendary gold badge at the end. Um, but in order to win this, you must join the channel membership and I will be drawing the winner. I think I'll do it very soon. I think maybe even tomorrow. So if you do want to get in on this competition, um, you have 24 hours to do so. Anyway, uh, I think that's it. Wraps up. Uh, shout out to Lucas uh, if you're watching. Um, shout out to Matt for doing the mod on this. Shout out to all the channel members for showing up. I appreciate it greatly. Um, yeah, good luck to you all and uh, may the force be with you.